It's an enigma of a betting occasion in the NFL. For some reason, it is consistently, statistically, the chalkiest week of the NFL year. Welcome into the Hot Read Podcast special Best Bet Gauntlet Thanksgiving edition. I'm your host, Easton Freeze, Director of Public Content here at BroadwaySportsMedia.com. We're also brought to you by the 440 Podcast Network. You can follow me on social media at Easton Freeze. I am joined, as always, by producer JT. You can follow on social media at JT underscore Runky. JT, happy Thanksgiving Eve. Are you excited for this special second annual betting episode? I, I am, and I'm so excited as to uh, wa- bet these Thanksgiving games as well as watch them so much so that instead of just getting up bright and early and driving mm-hmm. to Thanksgiving tomorrow, I'm I'm driving tonight. So uh, if you see any parlays at like 2 a.m. while I'm in the backwoods <laughs> of Tennessee that are like plus 9,000 and I'm saying this hits no matter what, I would I would Can't totally miss. fail them can't miss it's, right, right, right. It's, it's impossible that those will fail when you already see it this is a good thing that you're going to be driving for the next 12 hours of your life because i can already tell you have so much energy right now so there's no way that that's uh going to be an issue for you you need to put on some caffeine would be my recommendation uh, yeah for this evening. I think is that I've, the plan yeah I, I went to i went to the gas station already um because i just like don't it's such a crapshoot i don't know if what's going to be open tonight so i i, I right. stocked up i got a little cooler of all my all my assorted energy drinks and coffee drinks of, of sorts. So I'm going to be wired. So <laughs> we'll see how I it goes. I love that. Well, see, so you're, you're doing Thanksgiving tomorrow. You're going to uh, South Carolina, right? University of to hang out with your brother yes. and your dad for a big Gamecocks game. Am I right? Yeah, we're going to, we're going. So basically we're not doing Thanksgiving this year. We were just like, we're <laughs> right. going to go to the Gamecocks Clemson game. And so that's what we're doing. It's on Saturday. Super excited for that. i um, excited to watch some, uh, some, some good prospects, get, get my early scouting in my only early scouting for the combine season. Sounds like um, it's going to be yeah, a real, a real boy dinner thing getting spread oh it's gonna be like such this. a it's gonna be a such a frat boy thanksgiving it, it's <laughs> gonna be great i'm excited well i'm currently with this awesome lighting and janky virtual background i got going on right here if you're watching this on youtube i'm um, at my grandparents house the first leg of our thanksgiving tour uh just literally just stepped away from our early thanksgiving meal so i am stuffed to the brim gonna be at my other set of grandparents house tomorrow with my wife and my family so we do a lot, a lot of family things this week and uh, we had to take a break here from the family activities to talk about our favorite bets for the thanksgiving spread now this year jd we get a little bit extra action because the nfl is debuting their black friday game this year so we've got three games on thanksgiving and then friday evening we've got a game between the dolphins and the jets we're going to talk about each game and we're going to kind of we modify the rules of the best bet gauntlet for this event because full disclosure this is really the one episode a year we do over 100 episodes of the hot read podcast every year this is the one episode a year that we really do more for ourselves than for our audience because it's just too much daggum fun for us to to do and so we are going to select three bets of any kind each from each game and then uh, on thanksgiving and then we've got two bets each for the Black Friday game, and then a fun parlay that we're going to take together to cap things off at the end. But it is still a draft style. These are sides, bets, props, totals, parlays, whatever you can put money down on, as long as it is roughly even money. So anything from plus 120 to minus 120, those are the parameters that JT and I pretty much kept ourselves inside of with these picks. So they're going to be all over the board. There's going to be some ones that are very funny, very strange, some very degenerate selections. But we've done some research on them. We've got some numbers to back them up and reasons why we're excited about them and think they're going to be money makers. And they are going to count against our best bet gauntlet record this year. So this is not just some throwaway betting. This is uh, this this has some real stakes to it. And you could really hurt or help yourself based on how Thanksgiving goes. Of course, as always, we recommend that you tail all of our picks here on the best bet gauntlet as we continue to make you money over a season and a half sample size of 300 plus bets at this point if you're watching 
or listening to the show. We appreciate you doing so. Make sure you go over to Broadway Sports Media's YouTube page and subscribe over there at Broadway Sports Media on YouTube. Subscribing there helps us out tremendously. It is free to you, and we are really trying to get that follower count up, that subscriber count up as much as possible. And of course, follow us on social media at Hot Read Pod on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. All right, JT. Let's dive into the games, how about? And with this first one, I believe it's at noon on Thursday. We've got Green Bay visiting Detroit. One of, uh, I just realized this, all four of these games are divisional games. I'm not sure if that's by design or not, but the first of the four divisional games, Green Bay visiting Detroit. Green Bay coming off of a big win against against Pittsburgh, an ugly, gross game. Detroit coming off of a game where they kind of got away with one against another divisional opponent, the Chicago Bears. They end up winning but not covering. The spread as of Tuesday, when we're recording this about 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, is a 7.5. Detroit laying 7.5 points. Again, we can go anywhere we want on the board. And JT, you did win the best bet gauntlet in Week 11, so the first pick belongs to me. And with my first pick, I'm going to select my maybe favorite prop of any of these games. It's rookie Jaden Reed, Green Bay Packers wide receiver. I'm taking him over 25.5 receiving yards in this game. Really simple handicap to a lot of these, but this one in particular. In the last four games that Jaden Reed has played, he has gone not just over 25 and a half, but over, over 46 receiving yards. He's almost doubled this three of the last four games that he has played in, as well as the fact that in this game, I expect Detroit to be leading, commanding the game for pretty much the entirety of regulation, meaning Green Bay is going to be in a passing come from behind game script. I think he's going to get plenty of targets, plenty of looks. I expect him to crush this number. It's a highly graded prop on the Action Network's pro prop um, analytics server. So everything that I see points towards going with Jaden Reed over 25 and a half receiving yards is my first pick yeah I, i'm gonna be tailing that one because also uh, currently no d- despite no one caring about my fantasy football team i will be playing right. Jaden reed this week <laughs> um, so it's gotta just be because right. it's gotta i, I be need right. i need a hail mary play to keep my playoff chances alive so i'm hoping that, that one hits and i hope he has a good day i'm also thinking about sprinkling um, not even a half unit, but a quarter of a unit on all three of these uh, Green Bay wide receivers anytime touchdown because mm. uh, Detroit does like to give up big time plays and all three of these receivers, whether it be Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, or Jaden Reed are all big time down the field kind of guys. So I think at a quarter of a unit, you're going to make your money back and more on those. Maybe hit two of them because uh, Jordan Love, like you said, they're going to be playing from behind. So I love that pick right there. I'm going to head over to the sides on this one and, and I'm going with Detroit minus seven and a half in this game. Um, simple, like we I said, like it. It, it, I, this is this is one where I feel like I've been reading Detroit pretty well this season. Last week, I took Chicago because I just thought that was a trap game for them getting Justin yep. Fields back. That defense is back. Well, now they're going back. They're going to be playing at home again on Thanksgiving. And they're playing a Green Bay team who comes off a pretty fraudulent win against the Los Angeles Chargers, in my opinion. Uh, The debate this entire week has been how Justin Herbert literally had maybe one of his best games of his career, but because this Chargers team just keeps shooting themselves in the foot in every (laughs) other aspect, uh, they cannot come away with the win. Uh, Just a couple of stats for you for for this game. Matt LaFleur, he's excelled as an underdog, and currently he's a plus seven and a half point underdog. However, uh, even though he's 17 and 10 against the spread as an underdog, he's 12 and five with when he had Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback, only five and five as an underdog with Jordan Love. So not crazy about that one. If you want to know how LaFleur has done against the Lions since 2017, um, the Packers are just two and 11 against the spread versus the Lions. It's LaFleur's least profitable opponent against the spread going two and seven against the spread on those. If you're not more of a trends guy and you just want to know how the game is played. Uh, Jordan Love struggles against teams who get to the quarterback and get pressure often. Um, he, he doesn't play good against teams when the sack rate is up. And currently the Lions have a sack rate of 3.7% of plays that end in a sack. When it is more than 3%, Jordan Love is 2-4 and four against the spread. This is another one where I think it plays out very similarly to earlier this, this year. I think that the Lions get out to a lead. I think they continue to stay a lead. I think they have the better defense. I think they have the better quarterback and offense play right now. Um, so I'm going to take Detroit minus 7.5 this week. 
Yep, I like that pick. And, and I, I was kicking myself in the middle of you reading out your numbers on that one because we should have started things out with some general Thanksgiving betting data for the folks. So let me quick pause. Very quickly, I want to run through just the, the baseline numbers. Because Thanksgiving, JT, we enjoy betting it so much because it's a it's it's an enigma of a betting occasion in the NFL. It is really different from any other weekend, any playoff weekend, any preseason sicko betting. Like it's very different in the sense that for some reason, it is consistently, statistically, the chalkiest week of the NFL year with the Thanksgiving games in particular. Now, week 12, the Sunday, that's a different story. But with the games on Thanksgiving, historically, these games are really, really chalky. Um, some numbers for you for this year's slate. If Detroit, Dallas, and San Francisco all close as seven or more point favorites, which they're going to, um, I can go ahead and tell you that right now. It's going to be the first Thanksgiving slate in history with three games of that magnitude, so lopsided. Uh, favorites of seven or more for, for those of you wanting to bet the big favorites on Thanksgiving are 21 and two straight up, 17 and six against the spread on Thanksgiving since 2006. So, favorites of seven or more have not just dominated in winning these games, but in covering. Favorites of 10 or more are eight and oh against the spread on Thanksgiving since 2005, 11 and oh against the spread in the last 30 years. So, these massive favorites are literally perfect in the last three decades of Thanksgiving football, which again is so, so different. We love to bet against the big favorites on regular weeks of the, of the NFL calendar on regular Sundays, not on Thanksgiving. Road favorites are uh, of any amount are 24 and one straight up 19 and six against the spread. Favorites are seven or more on the road or nine and oh straight up eight and one against the spread. All of those numbers coming in the last 20 years. The only exception to these favorites dominate rule JT are America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. Thanksgiving, in one sentence, is chalk, 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 except for the Cowboys. That's essentially what it is. Uh, Dallas has lost four, or excuse me, they have not covered in four straight games against the spread on Thanksgiving. They are 1-11 in 11 against the spread in their last 12. So just dreadful, miserable covering on Thanksgiving, the Dallas Cowboys are. Dak Prescott, for his part, is 1-5. in five in uh, covering on Thanksgiving, the worst of any quarterback on Thanksgiving since 1990. So you need to bet the faves, except for the Cowboys, is essentially the golden rule on Thanksgiving. Now, with that said, let's get back to our sides here. My second pick in this Green Bay Detroit game, the early game on Thanksgiving, I'm going with another young player that I expect to continue to break out. Give me Jamison Williams, second year receiver for the Detroit Lions over one and a half receptions. Jamison Williams over one and a half receptions. The play here is because of this. He's gone over this number, two or more receptions, in five of the six games that he has played all year long. And his snap share continues to increase significantly each and every week, especially the last two weeks. He's really skyrocketed from rotational player to borderline starter in terms of snap share the past two weeks. I can I expect that to continue. I think he's going to continue to become a staple of the offense. Again, just need two receptions for him in this game to cover. He's done that in five of the six games he's played this year. I think he's going to give me Jamison Williams over one and a half receptions. Yeah, I like that. And I think it's also important to say where we're getting these lines because obviously different books have different lines. I'm looking at one of my accounts, my FanDuel account, doesn't even allow you to bet on Jaden Reed because they're a bunch of little sissies. So it's losers. Important to, they're it's, afraid, it's important to remember. They're afraid of the action. They're afraid they of the are. juice. They man. are afraid of the juice, especially with that one there. So yeah, I, I like that pick. And I think you got that one from DraftKings who has a lot more player props. So if you're looking for the player props, definitely right. uh, head yep. over to there. My next one, I'm staying with a side, but in the same game, but going uh, just splitting the game in half here. So I'm going with Detroit minus four and a half um, first half spread. A couple books have it at five and a half. I still would feel pretty comfortable with that, especially with the value you're getting right now. Um, I think you can get it at five and a half on FanDuel uh, plus even money plus a hundred. Just a couple of um, of stats on this one. Like I said, I, I expect this Detroit team to get out to an early lead. Um, as we know, this Green Bay team struggles in the first half. Um, it's hard for them to get anything going. Um, as we've seen time and time again in the uh, Steelers game, 
in the Chargers game. A, a, a low scoring totals from that team specifically, and I expect that to happen once again here. But this Lions team just gets up early um, and like looks to stay up early. A couple stats here: Goff is Jared Goff. That is is nineteen seven and one against the first half spread over the past two seasons. It's the best mark of any quarterback in the NFL. He's also just the most profitable quarterback against the spread over the past five years. Um, Which is a crazy mind, number, but he really it's, has. It's been. pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking for them. I'm looking for Jared Goff specifically to bounce back after uh, his poor performance last week and lead the Lions out to a quick start. Um, so yeah, if you can still get it at four and a half, that's what I have it at. Love it. Um, but five and a half, I still feel pretty comfortable, especially at the at the even odds that it is right now. So yeah, I'm going to take them with the first half points. I like that pick. And I think folks to just see our graphic of the rundown of these picks on social media are going to be like, why'd they double dip on Detroit full game favorite and first half favorite? This is absolutely a spot where you should be doing that because of the fact that, like you said, Detroit has been getting out so quickly ahead of their opponents. With my third and final pick in the Green Bay Detroit game, I have got a very simple handicap here. Give me A.J. Dillon running back for the Green Bay Packers, under 48 and a half rushing yards. It's A.J. Dillon, under 48 and a half rushing yards. Two reasons why I'm taking this one. First of all, you just look at his statistics so far this year. He has gone under this number in two of the last three games, five of the last eight games that he has played. The other time, the, the previous time that they played this Detroit team this year, he had all of 11 yards rushing, so they shut him down in that one. I think they're going to do it again. I think a big part of the reason why he's going to have less than roughly 50 rushing yards in this one, even though I expect him to get a decent uh, sample size of attempts, especially early in the game, is because, again, they're going to be in that trailing game script. I think they're going to be having to throw. They're going to have to be throwing the ball a good bit, especially in that second half. They won't get the ball to their backs very often. Uh, fewer attempts, fewer yards. I like it for A.J. Dillon to go under 48 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, with the final pick here in this first game, I'm going to keep it simple and go with a running back on the other side. I'm going to take David Montgomery's over rushing yards 66 and a half right now on a couple books. This one for me is pretty simple. Last time they played Green Bay, it was clear that once they got up early, they wanted to control the clock as much as they as they could. And even with the uptick in Jameer Gibbs usage, I expect them to run with David Montgomery just as they did last uh, last time. This Green Bay front is not very good against the run. They're the fifth worst in, in the league against the uh, the run, and I expect that to continue in this game. Last time David Montgomery played him, he had 32 carries for 121 yards. That's only 3.8 <laughs> yards per carry. Since then, he's only not gotten better with his yeah, he's only gotten better with his efficiency. Last two games, 9.7 yards per carry, 6.3 Ooh. yards per carry. I think if he gets his 10 uh, or to, to to 12 carries this game against this run defense. I expect him to get that and more, um, especially with how much they're going to want to control the clock. So I'm going to take David Montgomery's yards over. I like it. All right, so those are our picks. Those are our six picks in the Green Bay Detroit game. Instead of recapping all of our picks at the end of the episode and reading out 23 picks to you in a word salad that your brain can't comprehend. I know that's a lot. I'll go game by game. So let's let's review this game's picks. I am taking A.J. Dillon under 48 and a half rushing yards, Jaden Reed over 25 and a half receiving yards, and Jameis Williams over one and a half receptions. For JT's part, he's got the double dip on Detroit sides, Detroit full game minus seven and a half, Detroit first half minus four and a half, and David Montgomery over 66 and a half rushing yards. All right, our next game on the Thanksgiving slate. The midday game, it's Washington at Dallas, a Thanksgiving staple. The game that I want, this is really, I know Detroit is like the team everybody thinks about when they think about Thanksgiving. For me, from my childhood, JT, I always go back to my first memory is watching the old Redskins teams playing these Dallas Cowboys. I've seen it a bunch in my lifetime. It's produced a number of very strange football games. So proceed with caution. In this one, it's another instance of Dallas being very heavily favored over a team that they, uh, the, the, the market, the books consider to be far inferior to Dallas, but it is a division game. Dallas, like we said, they are very bad at covering and very fluky on Thanksgiving. JT, why don't you do the honors for us? Start us off with the first pick of yours in this Dallas Washington game. 
Yeah, so the first one here is one that we we both of us kind of put together this parlay because as much as we like Dallas in this game, we do realize that everything is pre- like you said, pretty much chalk for this cow uh, for for uh, Thanksgiving, except the Dallas the Cowboys. Cowboys. Um, well, what are they are? They're, they're what plus twelve and a half right now? Yeah, Some I ridiculous so number. Right. We were talking about this. I personally loved this this bet at minus eleven. You didn't really like it at minus eleven. Now it's up to twelve and a half. I never got it uh, through our through our Twitter where we put our uh, look ahead lines. Um, so what can you do? I'm not going to take it at 12 and a half. <laughs> that's a lot of points. Tease it down, um, baby. Easy. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do this week. We're going to give you uh, a, a tease here on both sides of it here, both the, the side and the total. We're going Dallas minus six and a half and parlaying that with the under of uh, alternate under of 55 and a half. We think that Dallas is still going to win this game, but as is with divisional games outside of a Tommy DeVito led giants, like this Dallas team (laughs) plays them close. Um, I'm expecting this, this Washington team, as we've seen the Cowboys go bad, good, bad, good. We've seen the commanders go good, bad, good, bad. So I think this is a matchup where uh, (laughs) after getting absolutely smoked by Tommy DeVito, the chicken cutlet, uh lover the the most italian man king. <laughs> the the most italian man on on the east coast um I, i'm expecting Dow- or washington to come out and have a better showing um and with that the under of 55 and a half that kind of gives us uh kind of that space right there to to say that yes we do think dallas is going to win but they're not going to absolutely boat race them in this game and put up a performance like they did against the the giants we we could see a very similar line of maybe like a 28 to 17 line of of or close to that like Mm -hmm. with the carolina game um so with that you get that at minus 117 that is that is pretty much close to as if you were going to take the side uh in either one of these either the washington side or the cowboy side so that's one that we really like this week yeah i like i like that that parlay solution a lot because and spoiler we're gonna we're gonna come back to this double t's uh theme this motif later in the show it allows you to get the best of two trending best worlds right we know what what are st- standalone prime time prime time or standalone games this year so all prime time games or overseas games and now we're going to include thanksgiving games there i think last count 32 and 7 32 and 8 on the year uh to the under so primetime unders we've been talking about like crazy i think that still is going to apply in these standalone games and for that reason i think getting under 55 and a half is a safe play and then getting that dallas number down to winning uh by a, a touchdown allowing you to cash getting under that touchdown number is a big deal so i like that pick a lot my first one, I'm fascinated by what Sam Howell is going to do in this game. Sam Howell, mind you, the current leader in total passing yards in the NFL. He's just been slanging it this year. And I think he's going to have to be a big part of this game if Washington stands a chance. So my first pick in Washington at Dallas, give me Sam Howell over 38 and a half pass attempts. He has covered this number not just at the 39 number, but all the way at 41. He's gone 41 or more pass attempts in seven of his last eight games, five of his last five games. Um, It's going to be a passing game script, just like in the Detroit game. They're a big underdog here, even bigger underdog than Green Bay is. Uh, Washington is going to have to throw the ball all over the yard to Jahan Dotson and Terry, uh, Terry McLaurin. And all these studs that they've got on the edge, sneaky good receiving core, Logan Thomas and the like, they're going to have to pass the ball around the yard. And I think Sam Howell is already in in games that he's not even game script required to pass as much as he will in this one. He's already passing for north of 40 attempts per game. I think in this game, that will be no exception. So I think Sam Howell over 38 and a half pass attempts is the play here. Yeah, I, I like that that one as well. I'm going to go to a Sam Howell one as well here, and I'm going to take, I believe I got this one on DraftKings because, once again, FanDuel is bad. Um, I, I'm taking <laughs> Sam Howell over, over 0.5 interceptions. This one's pretty easy for me. Sam Howell, as, as he does, love to sling the ball. He also has not been efficient with slinging that ball. He's prone mm-hmm. to make a bunch of mistakes this season, and uh, you can look to just last week where he threw three interceptions against 
uh, the New York Giants. Uh, he's now <laughs> going up against a much better secondary this week. And in the last seven games, or let's see what, the last five games that he's played, there you go. Um, he, he's 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 thrown six interceptions in the last five games. I'm expecting that trend to continue against the Dallas team that has a good secondary, even without uh, digs. So I'm going to take the over on the interceptions for Sam Howell because of how much he's going to have to throw the ball. I like it. I like it. I'm going to go back to the Sam Howell. Well, with my second pick in this game, give me Sam Howell for the third consecutive bet on, between the two of us over 14 and a half rushing yards. Uh, this again, it's the exact same handicap, right? This Dallas defense is nasty. Their defensive front is nasty. I think they're going to get after him and force him to scramble and use his legs. And I'm looking at his numbers. I see no reason why he will not be willing to do that. In his last five games, he has gone over 14 and a half rushing yards in four of them. So four of the last five, he's cleared this number. That passing game script, Dallas pass rush, they're going to have him on the move all day long. So I love Sam Howell over 14 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, and let's, moving on here, I'm going to talk about some tight ends in this game. As we saw last year in this Thanksgiving game for Dallas, it was the all tight ends game where three Dallas oh, tight ends was. I'd forgotten scored, about this. Tight, uh, scored touchdowns. Both You just uh, unlocked Ferguson, that memory for me. I completely uh, I forgot forget, about this. I forget this. the other one, but then also Dalton Schultz. Now two of those three tight ends are gone. So we're going to start off with Jake Ferguson here. We're taking the over on receptions, three and a half. That was kind um, of the Jake Ferguson coming out party, right? It like, I don't really think was, people in America yeah. knew who he was until that. Yes, it, game. it was. It was. It was a little, a bit of a coming out game. But now he has become one of Dak's favorite targets uh, this season, and with oh, yeah. that has come a bunch of targets. I think the line for three and a half is is pretty simple here. In his last four games, he's gone over that three of four, except last week where he had a little bit of a down week from Carolina. Um, he's averaging four or more targets in his last four games as well. Pretty simple. If they're going to move the ball, they're going to want to look towards um, Jake Ferguson this week. So I'm going to take his over and then parlay that with the Ooh. tight end on the other team, Logan A Thomas. I'm taking, play game for JT. Yes, I like I, it. I, I'm, I'm taking the under on Logan Thomas's receptions, four and a half. A couple models that I've seen just uh, don't like it in this game, especially going up against a tough defense in, in Dallas. They have some pretty good linebackers who love and safety play that have been able to take away the tight end position so far this season. And uh, although they love to, uh, to try to target Logan Thomas, I think four and a half is just a little too steep for me. I could see him getting four, but I don't see him getting five in this one. Um, so I'm going to take Logan Thomas um, with under four and a half receptions. I like it. I like it with my last pick, our last pick in the Washington Dallas game. I'm finally getting away from Sam Howell. Two of my three are Sam Howell. I can't. It's too much Sam Howell exposure. I need to go elsewhere. So let me flip to their team here and take Mr. Finally got into the end zone himself, Tony Pollard, under 15 and a half rushing attempts in this game. If you look at his past seven games, in which a number of them, the Cowboys were blowing out their opponent, right? Some Giants games in there, the Carolina game last week. They have murdered some teams in their last seven. Despite that, and despite what on paper you'd think is a game script where it's going to be, let's run, run, run the ball until we can get out of here. We're winning by 20. Let's just, let's get out and pound and pound. They've not been getting the ball to Tony Pollard on the ground in those games to bleed the clock. Big blowout games in the last seven, and still he has gone 0 for 7 in those games, clearing this number. So he's gone under 15 and a half rushing attempts in his last seven games. I think that there's no reason that changes in this one where I expect them to be leading for a lot of the game. Give me Tony Pollard under 15 and a half rushing attempts. And those are our six picks for the Washington Dallas game. We are now halfway through to recap Washington Dallas. JT is going with Sam Howell over 0 0.5 interceptions. So Sam Howell to throw one or more interceptions, a parlay teaser parlay of Dallas minus six and a half and under 55 and a half total points in the game. And then a second parlay, parlaying two props, Logan Thomas under four and a half receptions and Jake Ferguson over three and a half receptions. So that's Thomas under four and a half, Ferguson over three and a half. Those are our picks for Washington at Dallas. Now the nightcap, another big divisional game. 
For my money, JT, I expect this one to maybe be the most exciting of the games of these four uh, on our Thanksgiving and Black Friday slate. We've got San Fran at Seattle, another big, big number. Now, this was the only game of these four that has at any point this week been under a touchdown spread. And Twitter, JT did well to lock that in on Twitter. Another big reason why you need to be following us on social media, Twitter in particular, on X, at Hot Read Pod. That's where you're going to find our look-ahead lines to get that closing line value of which JT got, which he'll tell you about here in a second. But San Fran now, I believe, is a seven, if not a seven-and-a-half point favorite against Seattle. If there was one of these games that if you are waiting to try to bet at game time and we're thinking it might come back down, maybe this one comes back down? Maybe? So if, you, if you're liking the San Fran side, which JT is about to tell you why you should, I would wait, but w- without any further teasing, JT, tell folks why you locked in San Fran at six and a half earlier in the week and why you like that side. You're muted. Personally, before I, before I even get into some of the data here, my, my thoughts on this game were, were pretty simple that um, San Fran loves this spot against a Seattle team. Like we said all season, we've been betting against Seattle quite a lot this season. Um, they they have not really beaten anybody that has has been worth a damn. Frankly, um, right. they they lost last week to a Los Angeles Rams game, which they probably should have won. They lose to a Commanders team that turned around after that win and lost to Tommy DeVito once again. As as I must <laughs> restate, um, this is just a I don't tough know what spot, the over under on Tommy DeVito references were for this episode but it hit a while ago yeah um this is this is a spot i think for san fran where um they 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 kind of came off that three game losing streak and now have just been absolutely soaring the past couple of weeks um they 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 absolutely trounce the jaguars then they go to and, and beat up on the buccaneers as well and now they face the seahawks which i think they do the same night favorites on thanksgiving um, have been 12 and four, 75 percent over mm. over the last uh, 16 games here. Um, also, Pete Carroll, he has covered two straight. However, I expect that to change here. Um, he's he's covered two straight against the NFC West, in, playing both um, the the uh, Rams and then the Cardinals. Before that, um, he has not had a three game against the spread win streak versus the NFC West since December of 2018. A little oh, funny stat there. What a niche um, stat! I like it. It is a niche stat, but Seahawks are two and one against the spread, and the against the against the spread versus the NFC West this season, and they have not finished above five hundred against the NFC West since uh, two thousand and fourteen. He's also the least <laughs> profitable coach against the spread versus own division at home, which they are at home in, um, since twenty seventeen. This is a spot where, like, like I said, they have some injuries in the secondary. Um, th- this team also with a Geno Smith who is going to play, but uh, could he be a little bit banged up still going into this game? I think so. So I'm going to take uh, San Fran to just absolutely demolish them like they've been doing all season in, in this spot. Uh, I'm going to take the minus six and a half, which I locked in earlier this week because I had a feeling that it was going to get above the touchdown. And uh, like you said, this is a classic San Fran wins by a touchdown spot. And I was like, it's too good to pass up. So I'm going to take it. I agree. I like that pick a lot. I'm going to do something similar, showing my respect for and ex- expectations, frankly, for San Francisco in this one. I'm going to go back to the well, JT, on our teaser parlays. So let me take with my first pick in the San Fran Seattle game San Francisco minus two and a half. So teasing them down under that field goal. San Fran minus two and a half plus over 38 and a half points. Now, I actually waffled on this one, JT. Earlier in our prep, I was talking about doing you did and taking an elevated under right bumping that number up and taking the under but as i've looked into this looked at some of the the picks that are already out there from some of my favorite pros we do a lot of tailing and i get a lot of my uh thoughts and information from them because they are full-blown full-time professionals in the betting space and make a lot of money so i'd be a fool not to listen to them they're big on this over it's strange because this is the prime time game of this weekend or of this of this week it is the game that fits that trend this year of what I'm, I'm definitely making it up, but it's in this it's in this neighborhood of 31 and 9, 31 and 8, whatever. 30 to a single digit record of primetime unders currently exists this season. So you'd think it'd be a, a heavy underplay 
But the pros know. I couldn't tell you why, but they know this game is likely to go over. And for that reason, I'm going to do a depressed over. It's going to be San Fran minus two and a half plus over 38 and a half. And the pros are taking just the straight over at, I think right now it's 44. And uh, if you look at what these two teams did when they saw each other previously this season, uh, that total was in the 60s. So not shocking, I guess, that pros are liking the these two to be pretty score happy for that reason. I think San Fran wins a field goal and this game gets into the forties for a total. Give me San Fran minus two and a half plus parlayed with the over of 38 and a half. Yeah, I like it. And now we're going to go to another prop for me. I'm going to go with a, um, a San Francisco wide receiver, but probably not one that you were even had on your radar here. I'm going with Jawan Jennings with his over oh. in yards uh in this game uh, the listen the past couple of games for him have been um pretty lackluster he he only was targeted one time last week um it only was targeted two times uh the week before against Jacksonville but against these teams that have better uh secondaries like with Cleveland and with Minnesota and, and a couple of these other ones as well um he's had some good production two for 26 on four targets and then against minnesota five for 54 against uh, with nine targets um and, and even though debo samuel's back i'm expecting nine? him to at least wow yeah he had nine targets in that game with debo samuel gone but debo samuel's back but i still expect him to at least get a couple of targets in this game against a secondary that is going to be on brandon Ayuk and debo samuel constantly in this game with so many mouths uh, to defend in, in this game, I think Juwan Jennings finds a little soft spot for him, and I think Kyle Shanahan knows that. His uh, over-under currently on receptions is 13 and a half receiving yards, so that's pretty much for a Juwan Jennings reception. That's pretty much, if he gets one, he's going to get over it. Um, so I, I like this pick this week. I'm putting half a unit on this one this week, so that's one of my favorites. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, my next pick, my second pick in the San Fran Seattle game, I'm going Zach Charbonnet over 52 and a half rush yards. This is maybe the, the selection that JT and I debated most heavily. He's not fond on this one, which I understand his reasoning, but I am still, despite listening to and contemplating his concerns, I am still heavily invested in this pick. And let me explain why. Charbonnet has not been the feature back this year. This week, he is set to do that as the only healthy back on this Seattle roster, and for that reason, I think that he's going to see the volume. Now, the concerns from JT, which are valid, were there's a big difference between a change of pace back and a feature back. And when a change of pace back is put into that feature role, thrust into that position, sometimes that efficiency, that production, takes a significant hit. They're just not built for that kind of workload, that kind of spotlight. I'm not sure that's the case with Charbonnet. Now, maybe it's the it's the case if we find out that Charbonnet really only works because of what Ken Walker has been able to do uh, between the tackles and pounding on defenses. But I think Charbonnet is going to be up to the challenge. If you look at him in his past four games, he has had 44 or more rushing yards in three of those four, which is not clearing the number, by the way, of 52 and a half. It's close, but not clearing it. But the important bit here of this statistic is that in those games where he's averaging 44 or more rushing yards, he's averaging just 8.6 carries in those three games. Last week, when Ken Walker went down mid-game and you saw Charbonnet step into that feature back role, he finished the game with 15 carries. I expect that to probably be his floor in this game. I think he'll get 15, 16, 17 carries. And I think he will eclipse that 52 and a half rushing yard number because he is really their only healthy back and the Seattle offense only works if they can have some kind of production on the ground for that reason. Give me Zach Charbonnet over 52 and a half rushing yards. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on with your reasoning there. It's just it, for me. Yeah, like like we debated, it, it's pretty tough for me because of just how his yards per carry have been. It's been a, a little um They've been inflated it's been, for sure. It's been inflated for sure, but I, I think against the San Francisco team only averaging four, that's one that um, I, I see a reasoning for it for sure. With, with my last pick here um, for the San Francisco Seattle game, taking Brock Purdy's rushing over of nine and a half yards. Um, you Love can get this one. on both DraftKings and uh, FanDuel as well. 
in his last in three of his last four he's gone over that number by quite a bit in three of the last four he's gone for at least 14 yards on the ground or more um and against the seattle team that has a pretty aggressive young uh front seven there i'm expecting mm-hmm. them to get past the, the the line of scrimmage a couple of times make brock purdy move up in the in the pocket and if he can get a th- three or four runs i think he's going to find some space out there and be able to get this number um he, he's proved this season so far that he's able to be a mo- mobile quarterback um and i think that happens here once again so i'm going to take the brock purdy um over on the rushing yards i like that one a lot i'm absolutely tailing you on that one uh, my last pick, our final, or excuse me, no, wait, yes, this is the, we've done all, yeah, we've done all of them. This is our last pick from the San Francisco Seattle game. I'm going with a gross one, maybe the most niche pick of our entire slate here. Give me Jason Myers, the Seattle kicker, over five and a half kicking points. Now, I'm not sure where all you can get this. I know you can get it on DraftKings. That's where I found it. Really simple handicap on this one. Jason Myers, over five and a half kicking points means, very simply, Get two field goals in this game, you win the bet, right? It's it's really as simple as that. If you look at his production the past couple of games, he's gone over that number in three of his last four, including 15 points and 10 points in his last two games. I'm expecting the San Francisco defense to force a lot of threes instead of sevens. I think it's going to be very Titans fans who watch this show. It's going to be reminiscent of a lot of Titans games. I think a lot of these drives are going to stall out in the red zone. This this stalwart San Francisco. Francisco defense is going to get after this Seattle offense. A sack or two in that red area or near the red area forces them into a surrender dump off and then a 38-yard chip shot field goal from Jason Myers. And then boom, you're halfway to this bet. For that reason, I think that he gets two field goals and probably a couple extra points to boot because we like the over in this one. I'm going to take Jason Myers over five and a half points kicking. All right. That is our third of four games and the final of our Thanksgiving slate. To recap that San Francisco-Seattle game, our picks. JT is going with San Francisco, straight up, spread, minus six and a half. Jawan Jennings, over 13 and a half receiving yards. And Brock Purdy, over nine and a half rushing yards. For my part, I am taking a teaser parlay of San Fran teased down to minus two and a half, plus the over teased down to 38 and a half. So San Fran minus two and a half plus over 38 and a half. Jason Myers over five and a half kicking points and Zach Charbonnet over 52 and a half rushing yards. And that leaves us just one more game on the slate. JT, it's Miami at the New York Jets for a little Black Friday action. This is an Amazon Prime exclusive, right? This is a Prime game, I think. Um, So on Amazon Prime, we've got Miami at the Jets. We sat and we looked and we toiled and we researched and we're not about forcing bets just for the sake of bets on this show, JT. We do a lot of betting. So some folks might mistake us for folks that just guys that just throw out bets. But if we were just throwing bets at the wall, we would not have the winning record long term that we have. So we put a lot of thought into these. And for that reason, we decided we really only like four bets from this Miami at the Jets game. I said, I like I like two of these. And you said I like two of these. And we said, All right, fine. We'll just make it four. Continuity, you know me, I'm a big OCD guy. I give you a hard time all the time in post-production with my OCD habits. But I'm willing on this one to not force the bets and just pick two sides each. And then we're going to cap off today's show with a little Thanksgiving group parlay. Let me start us off here, JT. And I'm going to take the straight spread. Give me Miami at the New York Jets, Miami minus 10. I think that they win this game by more than 10 or more points. And there's certainly some push potential here and if you want to wait to see if some sharp money brings this number down to nine and a half for a split second before the game on friday i absolutely recommend doing that so just maybe wait but at 10 i still like it as long as it's under that 10 and a half number and you're not having to give the hook i think that miami wins this game significantly i think that there's not a lot of points to be scored but i still don't see that this tim boyle led offense for the jets uh, what it's tim boyle right isn't that who it is? Yes. Yeah, Tim. Okay, so just making sure. See, it's, it's so insignificant. Uh, I think Tim Boyle is not going to be able to put up many points on this Miami team. And Miami's offense, as good as the Jets' defense is, is going to get theirs in any game. And this is no exception. We said at the beginning of the show, near the beginning of the show, JT, just how successful these massive favorites that aren't named the Dallas Cowboys are. Let me just reiterate that for this handicap. Faves of 10 or more which this Miami team is 
They are 8-0 against the spread on Thanksgiving since 2005 and 11-0 against the spread in the last 30 years. That is as simple as it gets. That's all I need to take Miami minus 10. Yeah, I like that one here. Uh, and, and with my next pick, I'm going with the under, which is set currently at 41. It's a little gross, I, I admit here. Totally, um, but, totally. Yeah, but I love it. But for me personally, I think this this game is clearly just a get in, get out. We're playing on a weird day of the week, the first time ever. Really, let's just get do our business and, and, and get out of here for Mike McDaniel's team, which has played down to competition constantly in the past three or four weeks the under in in their games also if you're still riding high on that that absolute mauling of the of the broncos when they put up 70 points if you're still saying that this is such a prolific offense um I, they, they've the under in in the last four of their games has hit three times out of those four they're going up against a jets team with tim boyle who literally i i, I don't know how much of an upgrade it is over zach wilson like tim uh, tim boyle has thrown more interceptions than he has touchdown passes in his career <laughs> i Wait, expect really? them not to be able to move <laughs> the ball whatsoever this week and, oh, and so no. at least on the jet side th this could honestly be a cowboy situation where we're just hoping that the dolphins do not score more than 41 points this week because i don't foresee the jets being able to do anything on offense um so i'm to take the under here of 41. When did you even met? I was looking at this to, to see if I wanted to tell you on this one. Did you even see that the Jets in their last five haven't had a 40 point game period? They've gone yep. under 40 in their last five, which is ridiculousness. Well, the um, second, I, I mean, it's fair. The secondary is really good. They, they very I mean, good. led by Sauce yeah, Gardner, like great. they're going to be able to, to, um, shut down Miami a little bit, but yeah, I mean, you, you need in order to go over, you kind of need both sides to score points, and I just don't think that's going to happen. No, I, I completely agree. Um, with my second and final pick in the Jets Dolphins game, oh, and, and not to put words in your mouth, JT, one more thought on that that is absolutely a bet that I would pocket right now, write that down, put it on your desk if you're tailing with us at home. Don't bet it yet. These are the kinds of games, it's a standalone game on Friday, everybody's going to be. Uh, like hung over from their food coma the day before eating Thanksgiving leftovers, feeling good because of how chalky Thanksgiving games are for square betters. They're going to be probably rich in their fan duel and draft Kings accounts and wanting to double down, and make some more money on the black Friday game. I think this number, this over under could get pushed up and up and up. We're taking the under it's already gross. Wait to see if it gets a little bit less gross before game time. Um, with my second and final pick, I am taking a prop. Give me Brees Hall. Under 13 and a half rush attempts, simple handicap here. He's gone under 13 and a half rushing attempts in four of the last five. It's going to be a trailing game script against a very good, very potent Dolphins offense. I see no reason why the Jets will try to ground and pound. They just changed quarterbacks to a guy who I'm assuming they're going to want to throw at least as much as they allowed Zach Wilson, which was barely, maybe even more, just slightly than they were allowing Zach Wilson to throw which will mean less and less downs to hand the ball off. For that reason, I think taking Brees Hall under 13 and a half rush attempts is the play in this one. JT, what's your last pick in our final game? Yeah, my last pick here, I'm going with Raheem Mostert under two and a half receptions. And I know what you might be thinking, two and a half receptions. Raheem Mostert has got that easy. Well, right. Raheem Mostert, has not had more than two receptions since week six. He actually only has mm. two receptions total in the last four games that he's played, even Dang. without Devon Achan. Um, I know they lose Salvin Ahmed this week, but they also have Jeff Wilson Jr. Uh, on this team as well, who who will fill in that role. And especially if Achan plays this week, I expect him to get any of the receiving work. Um, Raheem Mostert is really used in, in the in the passing game as, as a red zone threat. He's someone that when they get down there in the red zone, that's where they start to use him. However, we've seen them kind of go away from that ever since the beginning of the season. Um, so for me, really, I, I like Raheem Mostert's under in, in this game for two and a half. He also, his, his yards is 13 and a half. I would possibly look to, to do that one as well when he has caught more, uh, than, than if he's caught two, um, he, he's gone for 17 and 13 in his last two games where he has two or more receptions. So, uh, both of those are good, but I'm going just with the under here, uh, two and a half. All right. I like it. So to recap our final game the black friday game from this thanksgiving slate jt has miami my excuse me this is me i've mixed them up jt has uh under 41 total points in that game and the raheem mostert under two and a half receptions i am going 
Miami minus 10 and Brees Hall under 13 and a half rush attempts. Now, JT, we promised one final Thanksgiving best bet gauntlet. Everybody hold hands and think kumbaya on the Christmas tree bet. It is the chalky Thanksgiving parlay on any other week of the NFL calendar. I would highly discourage this kind of betting behavior. However, the trends on Thanksgiving dictate that this is, in fact, a smart play. We did it last year with some teasers, same deal, but he's down some favorites, and that cash no sweat. We've got to do it again this year. So I'd throw a half unit. Maybe I'm going to put a full unit on a money line favorites parlay. If you parlay Detroit money line, Dallas money line, San Francisco money line, and Miami money line, that gets you to plus 116. That is plus money. And I think that there's a very good possibility with all four of these teams favored by over a touchdown, some even more than that, that all four win, whether they win big, win small, cover, don't cover. I think they win. I don't really see an upset for many of these teams, any of these games. The only one that I'm maybe slightly concerned about is that Seattle team getting up in a big divisional game. Outside of that, I'd be shocked if any of these are upsets. For that reason, I think that parlaying Detroit, Dallas, San Fran, and Miami money line is a good play. And you know what? We're going to count that one against both of our records in the competition this year, as well as the uh, the the total best bet gauntlet record this year. So that in total, JT, twenty three bets placed on Thanksgiving last year. We went eleven and seven on our nineteen bets. A big opportunity for us to boost our numbers. A big opportunity for us to take our numbers will be glued to our TVs on Thursday, as I'm sure all of you will be, as you're enjoying a great holiday with your family. We will talk to you again on Friday, live on Friday. This is the first time we've not gone live in a long time, JT. So the folks probably caught off guard by this one. It's debuting live, but we did record it earlier. We'll be live in the flesh, answering your questions, thoughts, comments, queries in the comment section on Friday, talking Titans, Panthers, a get right game titans maybe a tank bowl for both teams maybe we'll see we'll talk all about that have plenty of thoughts on that later in the week so enjoy your thanksgiving enjoy your families enjoy the football until friday for producer jt i'm your host easton freeze let's make some money this week we'll talk to you on friday